Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Live from Harlem in New York City, it's me. Yeah, that's me, Alex, and this is The Ramble. We go out to California. That's the way I always start it, because we go out to California. That's where Larry Brown is, and he's in San Francisco. How are things in San Francisco? They, the any, Golden State, yes. Uh, is it any better? Uh, let's see. They said it was. They're starting to clean up the uh, homeless camps around town. Yeah, but where do the homeless go? Well, no one seems to know. But <laughs> they've come by and ripped the tents down and everything. And suppose they're. I think they're offered some type of shelter, but. See, I mean, if you're rip, ripping the tents down, doesn't solve the problem. That only masks the problem. Yeah. You know. Um, so, I mean, uh, and you know, it's strange about it, and I, I, I know you probably agree with me on this. When I was growing up in San Francisco, even in the later years, we didn't think you tore down the tents of homeless people. You know, we we're always a little more giving, weren't we? Yeah, but that was before there was 10,000 of them. <laughs> there were 10,000 of them. And I'm trying to remember, I think the first time I remember seeing or hearing about homeless people was maybe like in 84 here. Really? It was very, kind of a very small problem, but people were kind of becoming aware of it, so it's... So maybe it's been with us for forty years. I guess it, it could be, have been around for quite a while, and we just didn't didn't pay attention yeah. to it. You know that it wasn't major, and we didn't pay attention to it. And also, it could have been where the homeless had a tendency to 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 hang out, which might not have been in the areas that were that impacted the people who lived in those neighborhoods. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. In other words, they did it in places that, you know, here in New York, believe it or not, there is a major population that lives under the subways. I think I've heard about this. Yeah. 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 And I've seen, you know, reporters and stuff who've decided to go down there. And literally, I mean, there are thousands of people down there. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That sounds like a movie. But they, they, don't, they don't impact that vision of homeless people, right? Although we do have a lot of homeless in New York City, but we always have. And people just imagine there are more because we had this migrant thing about the migrants coming in. But, you know, the migrants, most of them don't really want to live off charity. They'd like to earn a living, you know? And so they, they're, not, they're not the same way, you know? It's, it's weird. It's very weird. Uh, and it doesn't cause a, a major problem at all, um, but uh, because Martin, because they, they say oh, we have all there's that sound again. Boy, I've got this sound that happens, and the audience may hear it. I I, I keep hearing it. It's weird. Ah, oh, boy. Well, anyway, where was I? So. Anyway, the, the homeless, it's just, uh, what do we do about the homeless? Uh, I guess get them homes, and they won't be homeless. Well, yeah, uh, most of them are mentally ill or have drug problems. So. Well, not all of them do. A lot of them are um, have, been, uh, the, have been the product of the society, okay? And they then become homelessness, I think, uh, causes more homelessness. In other words, people who, if there's no exit route out of being homeless, uh, then people don't go looking for it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You know, and then they'll always be homeless. Uh, but, uh, you know, homelessness in San Francisco was not a big deal up when I was there. 
When I left, it still wasn't a big deal. Yeah, well, you'd uh, be shocked now. We did have a problem, though. I'll tell you. Uh, do you remember I, I, I did this on the radio show? We, I, I was appalled by the homeless who didn't have a place, and the homeless argued to me that if they could just talk to the mayor of, New, of San Francisco and get him to listen, they'd tell him what the problems were. I mean, half the reason there's a big homeless problem is nobody listens to them and nobody understands why, in fact, they're homeless. Everybody goes, oh, anybody can get a job. Anybody who wants to work can get a job. Yes, but why not? You know, what's the problem? And um, I I haven't been able to understand the problem myself either. Uh, So anyway, so... Uh, I, I talked to one homeless person who said, "Yeah, the mayor, mayor, we can't get the mayor to listen to us." So, I got a hold of Willie Brown, and I said, "Willie, uh, you know, we got these people, and they really want to talk to you about their homelessness." And this was at a time when it wasn't as bad in San Francisco as it as it supposedly is now. And uh, Willie Brown said, "Sure, set it all up." I said, okay, well, we'll hold it in the plaza in front of City Hall, okay? And then all you have to do is come down the stairs and talk to these people, you know, spend a, spend a bit of time with them and, and answer their questions. So it comes a day, and we, we do the remote, you know, you got to get all the wires and it's all set up and everything to get it back to the station. That was the old days where you couldn't just get on a cell phone and do it. <laughs> And um, we, we do our whole show, you know, and now it's time for the mayor. First of all, he doesn't show up on time. And cool. then he finally shows up and stays with us. And it's supposed to be like, you know, this town hall with the mayor. And the town hall was comprised of homeless people who want to confront him with the problems that they have every day and why they have these problems. And Willie Brown comes down says hello, and turns around and leaves. <laughs> well, so much for the town hall. You know? You want to talk about what the problem is? The problem is people like Willie Brown who won't listen. Uh-huh. That's hilarious. <laughs> you know, I simply felt they had no fault, and they, uh, you know, whatever. So, what is that? Well, it's so... Uh... Well, that, now that, it's so minute. expensive That's to a, live anywhere. Wait a minute, hold on a second. That's a phone ringing. Now it's ring. Oh, I can I don't know where it is. Huh? That's strange. Phone ringing. There's all kinds of noises happening today. You know, I have my phone in the other room, and it isn't my phone. Oh, I know what it is. Marjorie. Oh, of course, she's charging her phone in here. <laughs> That's what it was. Oh boy! Well, you found the problem. No, that wasn't the that isn't the blip, blipping problem. The blipping problem I'm hearing with uh, talk when I every now and then when I talk to you, and it sounds like the sound that is made when Skype fails. You know, but what the hell? And maybe it's trying to fail, but it can't. Anyway, right. weren't they uh, yeah. weren't they big at one time? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Are they still around or uh, what? Uh, Skype? Yeah, all these internet companies just. Well, get, I'm uh, I'm using I, 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 I use Skype every every time I talk to you. Okay. And, and the reason is I you know you you wouldn't you got rid of your high speed internet so we could have set up on Zoom and everybody could see that ugly mug of yours. Yeah. yeah. You know this I keep well. your story is the story I tell everybody about the ultimate luddite. That after a long time, you couldn't get... I understood it when you couldn't get high-speed Internet. But the day they put it in your apartment, and you had it for a month and got rid of it, that I I didn't... That I... (laughs) What was going through your mind at that time? I thought it was interesting for a few weeks, and then I just thought... (laughs) Interesting... I think I found my yeah, actually I was I was spending too much time on it. That's what I was problem. Oh, I see. That's what it was. 
you couldn't control these your urges. Yeah, what were I you? I would have gotten bored. What you got on YouTube and you couldn't get YouTube, off of it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, but I mean, wasn't it easier for you to talk to people? And wasn't it faster to get your email? You know. Email is a little, well, emails are kind of even on dial-up or okay, and that's, that's all I need it for. That's all you need it for, yeah. 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 Except for this once every two weeks where it would be nice to see you and let people see video instead of, I'm still running a still of you and an animation going on behind you. Yeah, it's just uh, better they see me a 20-year-old picture than the current version. The current version? Yeah. I can't imagine it's changed much. You always looked yeah. old, you know. You always <laughs> you always had an old personality. Uh-huh. So you've been working with anybody interesting lately? I haven't been doing much work lately. I think I'm getting out of the business. <laughs> You're getting out of the business or the business is getting out of you? Yeah, I think it's getting out of me. Like you said, we all have our time, and uh, that time may be coming up. Well, I, you know, I mean, it's whether you want to work or not, too. How old are you now? Seven, two. So, so, you so get, you've got uh, your Medicare and you've got your Social Security, Medicare. you know, and it really, in a way, you don't have to work. But you enjoy it, don't you? Not really. Well, not, well then if you don't, it's time to quit. Yeah. You know, the minute you stop enjoying doing this, like I'm, I guess I'm, I could say I'm not enjoying this as much as I used to. You know, uh, podcasting isn't as much fun as doing live radio. Now I know that's an old concept, folks. Who's there? Kids out there who got their little podcast and they love doing it, and they're oh, yeah, they had a great podcast. But you know, as you get older. Um, you kind of want to go back to those fine old days where you had a radio show. Yeah. You know, and it just went out there, and people heard it as it was happening. That was the best. Yeah. Although that, those days don't exist anymore. I could never no. do I could never do my show today. You know, I was watching. I got to tell you, this, this will interest little interesting. I was watching on YouTube uh, because I do go on YouTube and waste my time on it. Uh, they, it, all of a sudden, when you ask for something, all of a sudden things like it keep coming up, okay? Mm -hmm. And I guess I looked at some old black and white TV show from 1948, and all of a sudden all the things that came up were old TV shows from like 1948, 1952, <laughs> kinescopes from those days, right? So last night, I when I was growing up, uh, one of the things that influenced me in radio was a radio show you never heard of, probably. Some people are going to say, oh, I've heard of it, but no, you've heard of the one with two black guys doing it now, called The Breakfast Club with Don McNeil. And this was on every morning, and they, it was a variety show for an hour. There were singers on it. There was an orchestra that they had, and um, they did... Uh, you know, they in the middle of the show, like a halfway point in the show, they had the part that I loved when I was a kid. And I was eight years old when I was listening to this. And it was called, okay, everybody, let's march around the breakfast table. <laughs> and they would play this march music, and everybody in the studio was marching around, and I would march around my breakfast table. And I was That's just hilarious. That, but but that was the kind of thing that influenced my kind of radio. All right. So now it's years later. I'm in San Francisco. I've got a radio show, and we decide we're going to do supper with Schwarzman. And really, what that was to me was I was doing the Breakfast Club. You know. Okay. And and uh, we had entertainers, and the only thing we didn't have was people marching around. Well, in that case, the dinner table. Uh, and and that, that's what influenced me in doing radio. Radio was pictures of the mind, you know. And that's what we were doing constantly with our radio show. So when I saw this last night, I just went, God, I was eight years old, 
And when he was saying, let's all go march around the breakfast table, which they did on this on this kinescope, it was some sh- it was it was a, a video version of the radio show they did. And they were doing okay. it out of Philadelphia. And I just sat there and went. God, you know, this is where it all began for me. You know, I mean, yeah, there were people like Jack Benny and shows like that that also influenced me. But if anything really influenced me on how to do a morning show, it was that show. That's interesting. And so, and the orchestra they had was probably as large as Dick Bright's orchestra when we were at the Fairmont. And it was a huge orchestra, and, you know, people sang and danced, and uh, they made jokes, and they little repartee back and forth between each other. And that was so my... So was this a local or a national show? It was a national show. So this but, guy was big. He, he was very big. He was all over the country. Uh, the Breakfast Club with Don McNeil. Uh, and when these guys here and it started a show now that's out there called The Breakfast Club, I was pissed off because it wasn't The Breakfast Club. You're not marching around the breakfast table, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I I really, I sat there and I just kind of like went, gee, you know, I was eight years old when this thing was being done. I probably listened to that very show that morning. You know? Wow. Yeah. So that, that that's how radio informed me. Those were the... Re- you, got, you had your career at age eight. Yeah, yeah. And it's amazing there's a video of it because in those days there was barely television, you know. Television was just starting to form, and more on the East Coast than on the West Coast. In fact, okay, this is another story. I I, I would like to have you. Are you I, have you talk more about your background than me? No, this is, tell these this is more interesting to me. So let's go. The, these stories. So I don't want to be rude, um, but. Uh, The first time I ever really was entranced by television, everybody knows about Milton Berle. Or maybe everybody doesn't know about Milton Berle. But Milton Berle was the first guy to have a hit television show, a thing called the Texaco Star Theater. It was on at 8 o'clock on Tuesday nights. See, I remember all of that. And... um, There was one television set in my neighborhood, and it was in the window of Fagoni and Riley. What is that? What's that that square in front of the church down in North Beach? Uh, Washington Square? I think it's called Washington Square Park. It was on one side of Washington Square Park. And they would have a TV set in the window with a speaker outside attached to the TV set. So that you could stand there and watch Milton Berle. And you'd have to get there early because there were a t- massive ton wow. of people down there ready to watch it. And that was my first real remembrance of television. I think I finally saw it in a store one day. And they had Channel 5 on. And it was, it was later in the day because when we first got our first television set which was a traveler. I know you've never heard of the brand, and you never will again. No. But it was was a brand at the time. And we had my father bought a TV set, and they they came out and they installed the TV set. Now, you think about installing a TV set today. You go down to Costco, you get yourself a big-ass picture, right? You somehow put it in the car, get it, in some way that you can get at home. And you get at home, you stick it up on your dresser, and you watch a big-ass TV set. Well, in those days, they brought the TV set in uh, from uh, in a truck, and then they would bring it up to your apartment, or in my case, your home. And then they would proceed to install, in my case, a 20-foot television antenna on the roof. That's how we, that's how we got the picture, and uh, you know that that was our first television set, and um, they had they were up there I think for like three four hours trying to aim that antenna for the proper picture, 
And if you really had a little extra bucks, you could get yourself a antenna rotor that would rotate the antenna so you could get the optimum picture. And we were in Marin County, so the signal did not get into Marin County as easily as, as, uh, as it would today, for instance. So anyway, that was my first uh, inclination of TV. And, and do you remember how much a TV cost? I'm, God, I'm thinking $500. That's a lot of money then. Yeah, maybe maybe less, maybe $300. Uh, uh, the installation came with it. Um, and uh, you know how cable started? Interesting story. What happened, a guy would, let's say, own a TV store where he's selling TV sets, but he can't sell them. Because he's in Klamath Falls, Oregon, and the closest signal to Klamath Falls, Oregon is like 200 miles away. So how are you going to sell a TV set to a person? So what you do is you go up on the top of the hill and you put up a receiver to receive all the signals from like 200 miles away. And then you run a cable from that receiver down into the town. And then you take that cable and you spread it out over that town so that people can then get those signals from far away using a cable from the receiver on the top of the hill. Where do you think we got the term cable from? That's exactly where we got it from. Yeah. People could not sell their TV sets unless they would say, okay, here's a TV set, and by the way, guess what we're giving you for free? We're giving you a cable. And they would give the people a cable. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Well, how long ago was that? That was, man, that was in... Well, I'm trying to think that when I worked in Klamath Falls, Oregon, which was in 65, I think they still had cables coming in. Okay. You know? So that's that's how the whole cable industry was created. It wasn't for you know a town like San Francisco, so Larry Bubbles Brown can get all his TV shows. Is that what you're using now? You're still using cable? You must be. Uh, no, I've got the uh, I've got the old antenna. <laughs> oh, Larry! You, I've still that. I should probably put that on your tombstone. Yeah. I still have the old antenna. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so you what? You it's on top of your TV set? Yeah, and you had to I had to get a you had to get a digital converter box about 10 or 12 years ago oh, because they, the, Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, but it's still picked up through the antenna and then it comes through the box and I'm afraid to ask you this question. What brand, what kind of TV set do you have? It's called an Ace. Let's see. It's called. I can. Sh- I've had it. I bought it. I can remember. I bought it, December of two thousand and six. Oh God! And it's called. It's almost twenty years ago, folks. It's a Memor- Memorex. Memorex. Mm-hmm. They used to I make audio. T- they used TV. to make audio and videotape. Yeah. And 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 how does your Memorex? Is it color? It's color. Oh. It's uh, twenty inches. It's uh, it was. Uh, I think that's the last year before everything went flat screen. <laughs> weighed weighed a ton. I think that's where I got my hernia carrying a damn thing up here. Oh boy! Oh it's boy! It's huge. Have you ever thought about getting a flat screen? No. I'm going to as soon as this thing burns out. If it's going. On. <laughs> <laughs> this is eighteen years old now. So. Oh, God. Larry, Larry. And you still use an antenna on top of the TV yeah. set to get the pictures from. And the tube has got to be a cathode ray tube. It's not, you know, a flat screen yeah, tube. Yeah, it is. I mean, the back of the TV goes back like three feet. You know, I, I don't know what you would do if you went out and got a 4K television set. <laughs> you would just You would just go bonkers. Because you wouldn't be able to stand how clear the picture was. Yeah. 
Oh, well, Bubs, what are we going to do about you? I mean, what, what, what's it going to take to get you into this century? My death. Yeah, you really, you really, I, I, somebody said, why does he do that? And I said, I think he just basically does it because he doesn't want to lose his reputation. He's, <laughs> he's, got, a, he's got a reputation to live up to. Am I right? Yeah. Well, I could do it secretly, I guess. I know <laughs> yeah, I... yeah, secretly in back of this old TV set, I've got a flat screen, yeah. and I just move the old TV set away and watch programs. Oh, Larry, what are we going to do? It's amazing to me that the flat the flat screens should have come in like 30 or 40 years before they did. But Yeah, well, we didn't have the technology, believe it or not. We didn't have all the... Uh, all the chips and stuff like that, you know, that could make the flat screen possible. The only way we knew how to make a picture show up on a screen was the old cathode ray tubes, which had been around since, well, since the very beginning, you know. Yeah. They were the original things. But anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time here. We have. God, it's so much fun talking to you. And yes, we finished strong today. <laughs> we finished strong today. A lot of great stories about old yeah. TV. Me, the old man relishing the old days, yeah, that was great. and the other old man who kind of relishes the old days, but still refuses to have anything else but a cathode ray TV. Still ray living in the TV old days. Said. Anyway, thanks, Larry. We'll talk to you next thanks, week. Alex. Bye bye. You got it. Right. Now in its tenth year, this is Gavin. Talk. Like you've never heard it before. There he goes. That's uh, Larry Bubbles Brown, and he is our uh, our resident curmudgeon. Uh, so am I, actually. So, well, hello everybody. I only have one person waiting to come on right now, and we'll get to him in a second, I guess. I don't understand. Oh well, you know we got the World Series tonight. Yeah. Are you all Dodgers or Yankees fans? Okay. Anyway. Well, if we don't get a lot of people, you know, I don't have, uh, we don't have uh, 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 Amy on tonight. We don't have her on for the next week either. And uh, that being the case, uh, if we don't have enough people, I can sign off early and go to sleep early and, you know, do a lot of other stuff. Go, go in the other room and jerk off. I don't know. Any one of a number of things. Anyway, how you all doing today? Uh, I am uh, I'm a bit tired and exhausted. I'll tell you why. I went, you know, you ever get yourself a new phone? You know, in the old days when I wanted to buy a phone, I just went down to the uh, Apple store and I bought a, got, you know, just got an Apple iPhone, right? And they, I get a hold, we get a hold of uh, AT and T or whoever the um, company was and we'd uh, then sign up for it and then we'd get all our service and everything i've still got i think my original iphone right over here believe it or not okay so uh uh you know let me bring these people in while i'm telling this story okay then we will uh have oops how, how did we do that oh i see that's why that happened there we go uh now we're okay uh, let's see, Tom Yamaguchi is, I have to admit him. Okay, let's see here. There we go. Okay. Anyway, I'm telling stories here. I think Tom needs to clean off his lens. I believe he needs to. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, just clean it off. Oh, no, I smeared it up. <laughs> <laughs> I had that problem earlier. There you go. That's good now. That's clear and that's clean. Oh my God! Anyway, oh my God. I was talking about the you know uh, when I first bought my first uh, iPhone, I just went down, bought the phone, called AT and T, they turned the goddamn thing on, and that was it, right? Well, today I went down first time in three years to buy a new iPhone. I haven't done it in three years. I don't know why. I haven't really cared because they haven't improved that much, you know, from what they were. Uh. And so I didn't need to get a new one immediately, okay? Uh, so today, but then uh, now our batteries are dying and all of that, and so it was time for Marjorie and I to get a new one. 
So I go down to the store, and uh, this guy we do business with at AT and T, and he signs me up. Everything he gets me all set up, and the way he's got me set up, do you know how much I'm paying for the new phone? It's a twelve hundred dollar phone. I'm paying ten dollars for the phone. For some reason, they got one thing going, and another thing going, and uh, ultimately, if I keep it for two with for, for, for a year and a half. I can go get myself another one, or in three years I pay the thing off. The reason I wanted to pay, I want to just buy it outright, but he told me, don't do that. And I said, why not? He said, they've got a deal right now that if you, if you just, if, to begin with, you've got Marjorie, put her on your account with you, and uh, they have a deal where if you uh, uh, do all this stuff, one thing or another, it only comes to about 10 bucks. And I'm going, that's ridiculous, you know. But it does. So, but that was for starters, right? Now, the, I'm at the store, and of course, the guy starts, starts uh, um, uh, you know, trying to sell me other stuff. And I need a plug here, and I need a plug there, and I needed this for that. And hey, you know, that thing we could have on either side of our bed beds. Uh, to hold the phones would be really nice because it's modern and new, and we've had the other ones for like six years or something. So we, after all of that, the bill comes in today just for the extras and a few other little things that you know, they had to add on for the whole thing. It comes out to $1,000. You know? You remember when you just walked in, you got the phone, you left, you had it turned on, good. You're good to go. No, no more. No more. So he said that, you know, that he couldn't give me all those deals to get the price of the phone down if I didn't take it on the installment plan. So I went, okay, we'll do the installment plan. There's no, there's no uh, what do you call it, interest, so it doesn't matter. But, man, he was turning it on, and the Marjorie's had to get turned on, and hers wasn't turning on right, and they weren't able to move stuff over as fast, and we had to go next door and get lunch. And one thing, I, by the end of it all, I was... Heck, we came home, we were exhausted. And then all of a sudden, my watch wasn't syncing to the phone, so I had to call the guy to sync the phone to the watch. And dip, dip. It's, you know, it's more than an old man like myself can take. And you, you remember... Have, uh, you, yeah, I missed the first part. You have an iPhone. You went up to the 16, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. I don't know anybody that owns one now owns one but now i know that you own one yeah well it's just like the other ones you have at&t is that what you said yeah i do too and when i when i traded in my last phone for my iphone 14 mm -hmm. they had a deal where you get 380 dollars back but you've got to sign up for a three-year at&t contract yeah yeah that's what you, that's what i had to do and you know they give you you know what they gave me back for each of our phones? Yeah, for, yeah, but then they they give you back the 380 divided by 36. Each month they give you back a portion of it. I couldn't just pay the phone off and get the rebate. Yeah, but do you know how much money they gave me for each phone? A lot if you only had to pay $10. Yeah, well, they to begin with, that part of it was $700 a phone. Wow. So why not? I said, I went with it. Yeah. What the hell? But it was all this other stuff he like, uh, he like you know, sold me. You know, he was putting stuff on stuff that I told him take that off. I don't want that. You know, I don't yeah. want that char yeah. a charger. On. He got me a charger for my phone. Okay, I'll do it. I'll let the guy get, make a little extra money. I like him. Okay. But then oh, I, look, I look, and he's got one sitting on Marjorie's phone, too. And I went, uh-uh, no, not two of these things. Not at, like, you know, 90 bucks a piece. Come on, later on. See you later. Okay. You should have waited until you got on the show, because then Alan would have got an idea and sent you a free charger. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I don't, you know, so, you know, I mean, it used to be very simple, and I didn't have to spend a whole day in an AT&T store with them you know, doing one thing after another. Remember they could send you the phone and you knew how to just turn it on and then it just worked you through it? I don't know. It's just... I was thinking about getting the 16, but then Charlie would have to get one. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only reason I got one, what's yours? What's your current version? Mine is a 14. Mine was a 13. Uh -huh. 
Oh, okay. You know, and the battery was dying, and I could have had the battery replaced and had that phone working for the next 10 years, but then you know what happens is Apple comes along and says, uh, by the way, we're not updating the uh, this phone that you have because uh, it's uh, it, we're not, uh, what do you call it, uh, taking care of that phone any longer. Right. So you're not going to be able to upgrade it anyway. So anyway, when it runs out of a battery power, get a new one, unless yep. the battery died a year in or something, you know. So that's my uh, that's my story of my day, and I'm exhausted. I am just. I, ex- I didn't go anywhere. I mean, it's not a it's not a thing for an old man now any longer. You know, used to be. I was just all easy with this stuff, and I'm not anymore. Has it gotten more difficult? I think so. It has. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> because I would like a phone company that goes. We're the old people's phone. You turn it on, it works. <laughs> you know. Um, Straight Talk from Walmart has that set up. Well, I didn't see any reason to get another phone for three years because what did they, you know, every year, what do they add to it? They have very little more they add to it from last year, you know, but they try and make it look like it's a big deal. Oh, this one, this one's AI capable. What? That's the trick. They tell you capable. Huh? iPhone 16, they said, is going to be, have all this AI but they put the phone out before they came out with the AI, and the AI oh, is going to be in increments now, they're telling you. Yeah, yeah, no. So and and probably it will work on the old phones, too. Yep. See? So, I mean, what's new? You know, I mean, maybe the camera's a little bit, the camera's a bit better than the one I had. I but it's been so. three years, you know, and they've, they've improved on the cameras on that, hmm. you know. But, uh, man, it just, it took forever. It took all Tom's day. probably still got a flip phone. Huh? No. No, I got, <laughs> my, I got my iPhone 11. Mm-hmm. That's what I traded. I got, uh, well, actually, just before the pandemic. Was one 11? What, what, oh, 11. Uh, they sold you an 11. The 12s or 13s yeah, were already yeah, out. I think, it, I think it was, I think it was, uh, yeah, it had been out a while, yeah. Yeah, well, why not? You know, I, I would suggest if people want to go down and get a phone and they are still selling them 13s or, you know, 12s, buy them, you know? Yeah. I mean, because nothing much has changed. Camera mainly. The yeah. camera mainly and a few other sp- small things, you know. Uh, but, I mean, just uh, anyway... And, and on Marjorie's end of the deal, she's exhausted. And then I had to fix her phone to get her Google working. And, oh, uh, well, we're fine now. We're fine now. Good. Yeah. Good. So what's happening today? Anything that we should uh, see? See, there's nobody here now, basically. Well, Why? It's the World, World Series. World Everybody Series. Watching the World Series. See? Hmm. Well, I'm not a, I'm not a Yankees fan and I'm not a Dodgers fan, so I you know I don't care. It would have been interesting if it was Mets versus the Yankees. I think a Subway Series would have been nice. Then you would have had an earthquake. Yeah, then we would have had an earthquake. <laughs> that's right. So you've been spared an earthquake. Yeah, that's what happened the last time. There was a there was a, a yeah, what we call uh, Giants and A's. Yes, uh, 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 Trans Bay or whatever. What do we call it? Uh, Bay Bridge series. Bay Bridge yeah. series, yeah. Which yeah. collapsed. <laughs> Which wasn't there by the time it was over with, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know something? You know what's interesting about that? Uh, I was there for the earthquake. I can tell you exactly where I was. You probably can tell me, Tom, yes, exactly where, where you, you were. were. You probably can tell me exactly where you were, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> You've told us many times. Yeah. Uh, and I've told the story many times. Uh, But we all knew where we were. But what's strange is you ask most people in the Bay Area where they were when the earthquake hit, and they will tell you Candlestick Park. And I go, there weren't that many people at Candlestick Park (laughs) because they they couldn't fill that many people in there. Everybody thought they were at Candlestick Park. I was sitting home waiting for a pizza to be delivered. Yeah. Had the TV on the news station and told my roommate, ah, that was a minor earthquake. Did the guy get there with the pizza? No, never get the pizza. But the news helicopter 
uh, was was showing the traffic report and showed the collapse of the Bay Bridge, and I went, oh, my God. That was a lot stronger up there than it was down here. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there was a lot. I had friend, a friend of mine, other than you, that lived in the marina that their house collapsed. Where where were they? Uh, uh not home. They were they were on vacation. No, but I mean, did you say they had a place in the marina? Yeah, they had a place in the marina. Yeah, it was. I forget what they call it. Where the where the house is built over the garage, but the garage is not very well supported. Soft side or all something all, like that. Wait a minute. all all the home all the uh, all the uh, garages there were under the apartment houses. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, they and what place collapsed into their garage? We didn't collapse at all, but we had, they had one. I was gone during that time. I was in uh, Florida, okay, while they were doing all the fixing and all the shoring up. But they had to put in a heavier, you know, thing called foundations, but they were on struts. They were on, you know, on pylons. And they had to put new ones in. And, uh, but they, when they, they, you know, they got the marina going back pretty fast, about a year. After quicker that, than the bridge, huh? Probably quicker than the Bay Bridge. I think they did the Bay Bridge pretty fast, didn't they? If I remember correctly, no. how, how <laughs> really? Oh, you... oh the, the yeah, the the temporary repair, yeah, but the replacement took a decade. Right. <laughs> oh, the dem Oh, they, they built another bridge right next to it. Right. Is what they yeah. did. They, but that I'm talking about the actually much, fixing too. the bridge itself. They managed to get that yeah. going pretty fast. You know. Well, yeah, about a month or two. Until then, if you lived in Oakland and you had to go to San Francisco to work, you had to go all the way up through Richmond, across the Richmond-San Rafael Bridge, which, by the way, coming in the other direction has another name. Has a name of somebody. It's very oh. strange. Anyway, then you'd have to go through Marin, down across the Golden Gate Bridge and into San Francisco. Pretty long commute. Mm-hmm. For me, I was fortunate. I lived south of Oakland, and so I could take not the Bay Bridge anymore, but I could take the Dumbarton, or I could take the San Mateo and go up 101 into the city. Well, what couldn't you do back then that you can do today that would have solved that problem? Um, lived in Florida? No, work from home. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that. that yeah. yeah, we didn't have who, the internet who, who back then. Though? Yeah. Yeah, who works? Right. So everybody had to go to work anyway, you know, and get there any way they could. Fortunately, I was working in the same city that I live in, so I didn't have much of a drive. Yeah. Well, you know, I lived in the marina. <laughs> and you worked in San Francisco. Yeah, but I, I worked in the marina, which was, a hot, you know, literally rubble at that yep. point. I remember. Uh, I like, drove you know, down there the next day. Yeah, my apartment house didn't didn't fall or anything like that, but I had cracks in my wall, you know. Yeah. And uh, right next door to us, the apartment next door to us almost fell down completely. Wow. It, you know, it was very, it wasn't, uh, it was kind of random, you know, the, the destruction. Yeah. You kind of thought, ah, oh, the destruction, you know, happened. It was like... You had a, it was like a hand, and here there wasn't a problem. Here there wasn't a problem, but here there was a problem, you know, yeah. in between. So it was like fingers that got uh, got attacked. But anyway, ever anyway. Yeah, what, 1989. Huh? Yeah, and I was out of work. I was out yeah, of the work. Oakland Hills fire happened like a year or two afterwards, I think. Two years, 1991. Was that yeah. after Loma Prieta? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that destroyed a lot of land, a lot of property, and lives. Yep, yep. And, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Bay Area was, California has been hit with a lot of tragedies lately. And and o over the years, you know. Well, over the years. But I think if you look at the the Midwest and the East Coast, they're getting hit after storm after storm after storm. Yeah. You know, unlike an earthquake or a fire, you can't see that coming. But these people can see because of technology, they can see the storms coming. And uh, I don't know. Well, you can see the storms. I love in Florida where they tell everybody to evacuate. And, and nobody does. Yeah, yeah that, that's the first thing. The other thing, of course, is you see the freeway all blocked up on one side. Why don't they open both sides of the freeway and let them go out there? Well, I think there's a human 
part of the human condition that says, I, I don't want to leave my home. Yep. You know, I don't want to give up my home. Ooh. You know, uh, but, yeah. uh, you know, I, I look at these right. people, you know, and they're all underwater and everything, and it's sad. It's really sad because yeah. that kind of situation never happened a few years ago. And that's what's, what's the problem with it all, you know. I think it's global warming. Yeah, Katrina is the first time I remember places being completely underwater from people having to be rescued from rooftops. Yep, yep. But, uh, you know, I mean, I uh, anybody that does, says it doesn't have to do with global warming is nuts. <laughs> yep. So, you know, all those right-wingers, those MAGA people are nuts. They're crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, if Trump gets elected, I feel sorry. We're all we're all at an age where we're at the last third of our life, and or whatever. And you're at the last third of your life. I'm at the last fifth of my five percent of my life. Whatever. My you got my point. I feel sorry for kids that are growing up that have to deal with Trump's, you know. All, all the crap that he's going to pull if he gets elected, you know, and screwing up the country for... I just years. don't see it happening, okay? I don't know. I, I, I know the possibilities are great. Elected and, or screwing it up? Well, what we're being told by all the uh, news operations is what a close race it is. Yeah. But that's because it gets them viewers, yeah. yep. you know? I don't think it's that close. I think there's an. They all know that the people who are voting are not as easy to poll as they used to be. Nope. It used to be pretty easy, you know. Didn't have the internet. You didn't have anything else. But you just polled people, and usually you could do it within a few, few points either way. But now it's all different, you know. Cell phones. Hmm? Well, I mean, do you think do you think that somebody who is married to a MAGA husband is going to tell him or tell anybody that she's going to vote for Ma, for Ma, uh, Kamala? No, no. But do you think when she gets into that booth or she uh, is doing that privately uh, in one way or another, she might not just vote for Kamala? You know, I think that's possible. I mean, yeah. I don't see how anybody can vote for that guy. I mean, you know. I mean, today we find out he was he was was hanging out with uh, what's his name, the uh, sleazebag uh, Jeffrey, what, Jeffrey uh, Epstein. Epstein. He was hanging out with him. Damn Jews! This woman came along and said that uh, he uh, he groped her uh, on the insistence of of uh, Jeffrey, yeah. Jeffrey Epstein. It, you know, whatever. The guy's a sleazebag. You know uh, and. I'll be, I'll be right back. Oh, okay. okay. Don't worry. The score is zero, zero. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. But I, I don't know. You know, I just don't, I, I don't know what's going to happen. It could go either way. I don't understand why people are not on this show and they're watching the World Series. You could taper or, or. Yeah. You know, do whatever and watch the World Series later. This is important. Well, it, no, but the point is that uh, the reason why is uh, they, uh, what was the thing, point you brought up? <laughs> what was it's it? only game one. To That's how World exhausted yeah. I am. Well, not, you don't see here. why. Yeah, I'll tell you. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, Tony, where are you tonight? You're not. Wa yeah. Are you watching the? Oh, I guess he would watch the Yankees, wouldn't yeah, he? he? He likes the Yankees. Yeah. Yeah, he would watch the Yankees. Yeah. So and Jeff is probably watching them. Jeff is probably Jeff no. Jeff's did. Jeff doesn't care about sports. Oh, okay. But it could be he's went to bed early tonight. I don't know. Yeah. And and well, Charlie umpires, but softball, not baseball. So he doesn't yeah. care about baseball. Don't have time for it. Right. You don't have time for what? For baseball. For baseball, yeah. No. Wait a minute. What does this say? Zero one zero one zero one one one. Oh, zero sure. one one <laughs> zero. Yes, you are too. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's, what? That's binary for geek. G E E K. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Oh boy, 
have to in order to read his I shirts. Thought maybe this was Trump's new address system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I don't understand it. I don't understand how it can be this close. I mean, is is I don't think it's that uh, Kamala is that abhorrent. But you know, there. I, I asked Marjorie tonight. Are there really guys out there who won't vote for a woman? Unfortunately, unfortunately yes. I'll be right back. Because he disappears now. No, no, uh, no, I'm still here. I just have to do something that didn't need to be in the video. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Pick your ass. Go ahead. Anyway, That's right. That's so right. Uh, no, I just. Uh, y- you know, I can't understand why guys would be that macho that they wouldn't vote for a woman if she could do the job over the other guy. And there, a lot of these guys are voting for Trump because he's macho. Yeah, this guy's macho. a fucking crying baby wimp. No, somebody's getting the wrong message somewhere. And now Trump has called America a garbage pail. I know. You're insulting you us. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. He's desperate. That should tell you there it's not close. He's getting so desperate. You think, well, he, what's he desperate about? He supposedly is even with her. That's what I'm saying. He knows the truth that, that he's not even with I her. I think he's got numbers we don't have, okay? Well, they're all blowing smoke up his ass with telling him. Oh, you know, she's only got 25%. You got 75%. Well, listen, listen, if she loses, what did we get out of it? A Beyonce concert and a Bruce Springsteen concert, <laughs> you know? Um, so, what the yeah. hell? Did, did, Beyonce did a whole concert down there, right? Or, or she did some some music. I, I thought she was supposed to, Beyonce or somebody was supposed to do a concert this weekend. Uh, with with Kamala. Oh, really? I think yeah. that's Beyonce's. No, I think Beyonce was today in Houston, wasn't it? Oh, okay. well, it was in Houston. You're right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, and that's yeah. probably what I read. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you know, I mean, uh, do I do I want a guy as president? I don't care. You know, we've had guys long enough, and they've screwed up this country one right after the other. Oh. I just think that. Uh, um, give a woman a chance. You know, women have a much more better sensitivity towards things. I think she's got three things going against her. They're not. They're not the three things that bother me at all. I think because she's black, that that goes against her for for white men. Because she's a woman, white men again, and because um, what was the third thing? I don't know. Well, white men again. Yeah. White men again. <laughs> So, yeah, just, you know, and and uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, people can't see how, how bad Trump screwed up last time and he's going to get an office and he's going to be, you know, he's going to change his name to Hitler or something. Yeah, yeah, but I, I don't... They don't remember last time how you wouldn't even get to the office until noon because he was watching TV? Right. Watching Fox News all morning? Yeah. I think Melania has spent two nights in the White House. Well, no, she spent more time than that in the White House. But she hasn't been spending much time at Mar-a-Lago. I think she's been living in uh, in New York City because she, she sent uh, Barron yeah. Yeah. to school Dad, here. You want to sleep with him? Hell no. I hope Barron's going to turn out to be a nicer person than his father. You know, and I think I think there's a possibility that that's going to happen because his father doesn't spend enough time with him to have an imprint on him. He's probably in a private school in New York. So why don't we start? Why don't we start a rumor here? Everybody who's listening to us, just start a rumor here that Melania about two years ago had an abortion. And it's running for president against Kamala. No, 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 no. But she had an abortion, uh, and uh, she wanted it because she didn't want to have another Trump. Ta-da. You know, there e- everybody, some- start that rumor going before the election, okay? Yeah, there you, you know. go. 
And that's why she's pro-abortion. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. We live in strange you know, times. Part, no? of, part of the thing what people don't understand, I think, and maybe they do, is that, and Josh would probably say this, I don't know, but is that, you know, even though Trump and Kamala both say all the things they're going to do and want to do, mm -hmm. a lot of times they don't get them done because Congress gets in the way. You know, yep. Trump Trump had total control his first two years. He had the, the Senate and, and all of Congress and him. And he couldn't get the wall built. He couldn't get Obamacare canceled. He couldn't get a lot of things done. Yeah. So, you know, they all say what they want to do, but they rarely get. Okay, so if that's the case, okay, that being the case, that he's a lazy president, he doesn't do anything, okay? What makes you think he can get anything done if he's president again? I don't think so. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's no yeah, reason that's, to think that. That's exactly what I'm but saying. But yeah. sometimes not getting anything done is worse than getting something done. Right? Well, it looks he like he, it he looks like he'll be able to jail all his enemies and and have his the Supreme Court declare that that that's a, a part of his official duties and and so there's nothing that we can do to stop it, you know. <laughs> that's Well, he wants to get all the networks Wants to get all the broadcasters, uh, and uh, that he might be able to do, although it's going to be a little harder where the networks are concerned because, number one, the networks aren't licensed by the FCC or by any uh, governmental agency outside of, like, the FTC and the normal things that would be involved in in business. Uh, you know, so it's kind of hard to believe that he could... He could go out after these uh, TV networks. And the thing is, he can't go out after the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, online services. Because I don't think they, I don't think, am I right or am I wrong? But they're not uh, governed by any governmental agency. I mean, they can be looked into by a governmental agency for something they feel might be illegal or something like that, which is possible. But... Yeah. Well, at least he, it seems like he's got uh, Jeff Bezos scared. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, in what way? In the fact that uh, the Washington Post was going to uh, print an uh, endorsement of Paris, and he killed it. He killed the endorsement. And the speculation is he's afraid that if Trump gets in, that he's going to start cracking down on uh, Amazon. His, his businesses, you know. He's got to get retribution against Bezos. Yep. Well, I have to, in a, part of the way I have to kind of agree with him, don't you think it's time we started doing a little something to slow down Amazon? I mean, think about all the businesses. Think about all the businesses. That are in, I wouldn't have been able to what? get you a cane and Marjorie a cane. That's true. But on the other hand, I might have been able to get that cane from some independent cane maker. Who, you know, uh you know, I was thinking today uh, as I was at this place, this AT&T store, and, I, you know, I got some real money recently, so I don't care if I spend it, a lot of money on doodads and stuff like that because I kind of felt sorry for this guy who ran this AT&T store because 90% of what he sells in his store, I asked him, are, uh, are uh, iPhones. Okay. Who's his major competitor at selling iPhones? Nobody. Apple. Apple. Oh, Apple. The very okay. people that are supplying him with product, they're also his biggest competitors. The, There's the, something very wrong with that, you know? And so I think that there's something very wrong about the, the kind of majority that Amazon has. I mean, come on. Yeah, you, you could say there are some other sites that try to sell stuff, you know. eBay. But eBay, it doesn't sell stuff. eBay are people who want to resell stuff or sell you new, stuff. I buy new stuff on eBay. When Amazon won't send it to me, I buy it on eBay. Yeah, but you don't buy it from eBay. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, no, you're buying it from individuals who somehow laid their hands on a whole bunch of iPhones and are selling them to you slightly cheaper. But the point is that, that eBay is basically reselling stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, but my question is, um, 
isn't Apple, isn't Amazon, for instance, a real problem to the independent uh, uh, retailer? I think sure. independent retailers today, I, you buy everything online, don't you? Who are you talking to? You. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no, I, I, I go food shopping. Yeah. No, 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 no. Forget about food oh, shopping. You mean, yeah, junk, yeah, I do. I buy most stuff online, yes. Yeah, exactly. So do I. You know, but what's that doing to those people who are the retailers who you used to go to to buy that stuff? It's hurting them. Sears went out of business. Kmart went out of business. Yep. Only the big people. And those were big guys. Think about the small guys who are going out of business. Right. You know, I mean, that's why I like Kamala talking about small business. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we need to bring that back. I think we need to bring in, bring back uh, entrepreneurship. And all those things that we seem to have lost because, what the hell, you know? It's it's just kind of sad all the way around. So uh, anyway, I'm going to do a show, by the way, on uh, because I'm going away on that Thursday. But I'm going to do a show on Tuesday night of that week. Um, so we can all talk about the election coverage and so on and so yep. forth. And then I probably will do a show... Uh, without all the with the interview I do at the beginning of the show on uh, Wednesday, so we can talk about the results, or bemoan it, or pass out razor blades, you yeah. know, either for slicing your wrists or cutting the drugs. Uh, right. you know, I mean, it's... Yep, yep, yeah. You can you can get free heroin, I understand, from uh, Gabnet. Yeah, this is yeah, a joke. yeah, yeah. This is a joke, just for you people out in listening land, but. Uh, all you got to do is turn in your gabnet bucks. If yeah, Trump. exactly. Uh, Tom, I mean, uh, are you uh, are you having what they're calling the election angst? The election anxiety. Yeah. Oh yes, I mean, you know, it, it's unescapable. You know, um, you know, getting back to you know the 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 way the 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 the. the is covered, especially when we get into the closing days and uh, the big buzz phrase now towards uh, Harris is she she didn't close the deal you know like like um I uh I listened to the um to the CNN town hall yeah and after the town hall they came in, in with their analysts and the first one was Dana Bash who says well People telling me that uh, what they heard is she didn't seal the deal, and they go, "That's not the that's not the town hall I heard," and so I just turned it off. <laughs> well, you know, you know what you also hear the other term that you're hearing a lot is uh, they're in their closing arguments. That's right. The what is this? Arguments. A trial? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. That, you know, they're considering so they're, they're considered. A, 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 a trial, you know, that they, yeah, the closing arguments. And, and so it's, it's, uh, and, and, um, you know, and, and it's, they're just being judged by two different standards. And I'm, I'm just, you know, Harris is, is being judged by, well, she, she didn't, she didn't, ex hasn't really t t done enough to, to, uh, to uh, get the people to know her, you know, uh, to I, th I think to she's done a lot to. Well. I mean, she keeps. I and, think she's gotten she's a, done a lot to get people to know her because they didn't know her before this whole thing started, and that was less than three months ago. Yeah, but I mean, the, no matter how much she tries to do that, you've got these oh. pundits around saying, "Oh, she has." You know what they kept the saying? Time, and, it's like, yeah. but you know like, what they were well, saying for the longest time was, yeah. "Well, she really hasn't talked what she's going to do if she's president." And she kept talking about what she was going to do and talking about what she was going to do. And as long as they kept saying it, everybody's going, she just, just isn't saying what she's going to do if she's president. And then I'm going. To Trump, and what's Trump saying? I mean, he's just talking in generalities. Yeah. You know, the only specific he th he's thing he's talked about is, is this, uh, this uh, across-the-board tariff on all products that come in and then trying to convince people that this is going to raise their prices. It's like it's insane. There's a lot of things that 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 you can't you can't you know buy that are made in this country, 
and and if you want them, they were they're you're, it's going to be a tax on you. So so it's 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 silly that that as I said, they're they're judging Trump with a different standard. Did he this could, guy not go to school for what four years at Wharton? Yep. What did he learn? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, I can see. Knees. Kazuntite. Kazuntite. You got your allergies going on? Is that it? Allergies, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and allergies are, are 12 months a year now. Yeah. Oh. oh, boy. Here too. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Better, though. Uh, but, uh, no, I mean, it, it, it's just, I, I can't believe the man ever went to Warden. You know? Yeah. So... Um, he went there, but he didn't learn anything. He didn't learn anything. Obviously. <laughs> um, just getting more and more unhinged. Huh? You know? We're just huh? watching him getting more and more unhinged. Oh, and what you're watching is a guy who is slowly getting more and more towards uh, oh, uh, getting dementia. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, the, the way in which he's acting is very like dementia. When he gets out and he gives a speech for two hours, I mean, he, he's out there for two hours and doesn't say anything to speak of. But he goes out for two hours and just rambles around and he goes to one thing and he bounces off to another. He's like a pinball machine, yeah. you know? And he goes back and forth between these various people. Hold on a second. <laughs> there we go. Because once I sneeze, then I've got to blow my nose. Oh, hey, here comes Bree. Um, um, he'll talk some sense into us. Uh, he's probably eating lunch. He's probably eating yeah, yeah, lunch. What do you want to bet crazy. he's eating lunch? Yeah. Let's see here. Here we go. Here's Bree. He's eating lunch. We were betting you were going to be eating lunch. Yeah, you were right. Yeah. <laughs> you were really right. Yeah. I'm eating lunch. Yeah. I got my noise canceled. Oh, I'm not flying over there. Why? Why, wait, why, why is it? Time. Why is it in that restaurant? You seem to get this garbled sound. Yeah, we don't understand you. When you're out, you're oh. fine. Maybe, maybe you're using their Wi-Fi oh. or something. No, I'm on 5G, so. You're on. Oh, it could be your 5G. Yeah, it's. Okay. Move back to the United States where our technology yeah. is better. <laughs> I, I've been having a lot of issues with the internet the past few days. You wouldn't believe. Right, right. Not believe. Isn't it amazing how how much the world is just cohe just gotten cohesive because of the internet? Yep. I mean, look. I'll, I'll you, try going on now. I'm going to go on their Wi-Fi. Let's see. You're going to go on their Wi-Fi. Try their Wi-Fi. Let's yeah. see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. There we go. And now he's also in in uh, portrait mode. Yeah, how come that changed? Well, I'm moving my phone around to try to, well, you know, get the Wi-Fi. I think I've got a login. Turn it, turn it around the other, <laughs> other way. Turn it the other way. Turn it the other way. Like yeah, yeah. Well, oh, that yeah. that's that doesn't. Uh, before you were like, uh, you got. I think you got yourself locked. Oh no! Oh, the Wi-Fi is working great. <laughs> well, boy. Hey, come now back to the do. United States. We got this technology oh. thing all figured out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm on their internet. You can hear me better. No. 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 <laughs> What kind oh, of God. what kind of phone are you using? S twenty two Ultra. Oh, oh, it's time for a new iPhone. A uh, uh, what is it? Uh, S twenty two Ultra, but I'm getting the new iPad Mini. Is is that available in the Apple Store in New York? Because I'm just going to go to the Apple Store here if they have it. Yeah, they they have them in all the stores. Yeah, the Mini is very popular. No, I, I went I went to uh, one of the retailers. Called Switch. They, yesterday, they didn't have it. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to go to the Apple. You know what I was going to get? I was going to get one of the bigger 
uh, the uh, what is it the uh, uh, pro uh, the, the the pro but the iPad Pro no yep. no the. We're talking about the phone. I was going to get oh. the phone that's the highest oh. end. What is it? The XL Pro or something it's called. And he said, here, pick it up. And I held it. And he it's said, you want to carry cap. that around in your pocket? Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing was, there was a real heft to it. You know. Oh, that looks good, Bree. That, that looks, looks good. good. Yeah. Still yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where can you get a good hamburger around there? Oh, oh, you haven't lived until you've had a Ramley burger. A Whamley burger? A Ramley burger. You need one, Alex. Come to Malaysia. Okay, what kind of meat is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. But you can look it up. Look it up. R A M. <laughs> Yeah. Ramley Burgers. Okay. So what, anyway, Tom, what are you doing on election day? Are you working the polls or anything? Or no, I don't work the polls anymore. I'll just be doing my probably my regular jobs. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I I stopped when the, when the uh, when the pandemic stopped and they or started and they they stopped doing the uh, you know. They in person, went to mostly, yeah, but mostly, yeah. I, I mean, Kevin, I mean, I really admire him. I mean, you know, because he does like the four day, that's the only way you can really do it is, is you got to go in, you go to a big location and sit and wait and do that for four days. And I just, didn't yeah, do it. yeah. I, I used to, you know, I'll tell you, I, I used to work the polls in my neighborhood and it was really fun. It was like down by the fire station and, uh, and all seeing all my neighbors and coming in and you know their ballots and signing in, I just really loved it. But it's it doesn't appeal to me anymore. Yeah. Well, um, um, I, I, Amy, I wrote me today because I wanted to tell her that I was yeah, doing that too, Tuesday, yeah. and uh, she said that at her polling place where she's doing working some polling place. Uh, that uh, they had an incident with somebody showing up with a gun or something. Oh, oh my. It was in Texas. In yeah. Texas? Okay. I think it's allowed. Yeah. You know, you're right. In Texas, you are allowed to carry a weapon. You're, uh, Not in your hand, though. Not this in your hand, though. a gun in his hand. You can wear it in a holster. You can have it in a holster, yeah. Oh, you have to have, to have it in your hand, you say? No, no, you, no, this guy had it in his hand. That is illegal. You cannot walk around holding a gun in your hand. In his hand. And he, and he, he was holding it in his hand, she said? That's what Amy said, yeah. Oh, if okay. He was, uh, if he was uh, black and six years old, he would have been shot. Yeah, but the thing is... And it had been a toy gun. Yeah, but the thing mm -hmm. is that, uh, that uh, uh, you know, I mean, that's that's terrible. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know that it was out, out, you know. I do know that in Texas. That's why they called the cops is because he was, he, was, he was intimidating people because he had the gun out. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, it's going to be a really fun election, isn't it, huh? Oh, boy. See, that's why I vote by mail. I don't have to worry about anybody standing around with a gun intimidating me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, I vote by mail, too. Yeah. Is I don't want to get COVID or one of the 17 other diseases that are floating around. Now, do you have, do you have the latest uh, 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 vaccination? Yeah, a month ago for that, the flu, two and a half weeks. And what are you worried about? I don't like being sick, you know. No, you but what are you worried about? You can still get a mild case, you know. Well, you get a mild case, you go down and you get the, uh, uh, the what do you call it, the uh, Paxlovid. Paxlovid, and you're Paxlovid. good to go. You know, yeah. I, did, I mean, we don't hear of any, any many people dying these days from uh, from COVID. You Although you you know who know. almost died from COVID? He just revealed it was Al Pacino. Oh, really? you're, you're you're right. We don't hear. We don't hear about it. There's people are still death. dying from COVID. Yeah, yeah. A thousand people a, a week are dying from. Still COVID. a thousand yeah. a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. they're just not reporting it anymore. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, we got all our shots. You know. Well, you know, it's it's our group of people that are the highest at risk. I know, but when if I get if I feel that I've got COVID and I take a test and I've got COVID, I'm immediately calling my doctor and I get uh, Paxlovid. Right. And I've used Paxlovid before and it worked out fine. 
Uh, by the way, my uh, ex-girlfriend, Kathleen, who used to call mm-hmm. this show a lot, uh, yeah. just sent me a message that says, far, by far the most scariest election in history. Yeah. I think so. I, I don't Aww. know of any uh, that's worse than, uh, than this has been, you know? So, what the heck? Yeah, so. Los Angeles wins the first, the Dodgers wins the first three, uh, six to three. Okay. On a grand uh, slam. Like All right, everybody's going to call now. Okay, that's done now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, was I wanted to. I wanted to watch that, but now I won't. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, we didn't really want to watch you either. Watch the World Series. I, I, I only with watch them. the reviews. I watch the game reviews because it takes far less time. Yes, it does. Yes, it does, but it's probably far more fun to watch it. I mean, I'm not a big sports fan, but I like the World Series. I think it's cool, you know. The only person on the show that's got a sports Emmy. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And the only talk show host I know of that actually served in the military. Really? Yeah. All these guys like Hannity and so on, none of them ever were in the military. All these patriots, yeah. All these yeah. patriots, yeah. No, I, I was in the, uh, you know, I was in the Navy. Uh, granted, I was in Hollywood, but I was in the Navy. You know. And as I said before, don't uh, just realize that no, I don't know of any planes under my watch that got past Santa Monica Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I Tom doesn't have to laugh. He's heard all these before over the years, you know. Well, when you say planes, you underline the word planes because they didn't hadn't developed jets at that point, right? Uh, they hadn't developed planes, to tell you the truth. <laughs> all right, you know. You guys know who the first air first president that was on an airplane? The first president that was on an airplane. Well, we're Cleveland. Yes, Roosevelt. Bree said Grover Cleveland. Teddy Roosevelt. I was going to say Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Yeah, and he was on with the two guys. With... He was also the first to ride in a car, too. Wow, Teddy Roosevelt. Well, Teddy Roosevelt was kind of adventurous, wasn't he? He was always out there in front of all the stuff oh, that was, was happening. Mr. Un- unique. Yeah. And he was Republican, too. Mm-hmm. Well, there, it was party. different being a Republican back then. <laughs> back then. Yeah, no kidding. Republicans were sane back then. Well, it, it's not even sanity. They were, they were, you know, they were, actually the Democrats were kind of considered the assholes at that time, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but slowly, I think that the the Republicans have done a very good job of taking up the mantle of asshole, you know. <laughs> And why should why should we Democrats take all the heat? You know, that's what I'm saying. You know, Bree, you don't have to watch tomorrow night either. I'll just tell you the score right now. <laughs> I'll be sure not to. Tune I don't. In. I don't follow it. It just came up as a flash. Well, do they the do they run it live where you are, uh, Bree? Well, you can um, watch it anywhere. Yes and no. No, I I, I don't believe. They run it on the cable system, but I don't get that. So I don't know, but you can get a TV box, and the TV box will get it every channel around the world. Yeah, yeah. So, but you can you can watch it live if you wanted to, right? I could. Yeah. Okay, well then, don't blame us for ruining it for you. <laughs> that's right. He could have he could have been well, watching it instead of eating. Yeah. yeah, but you see, that's the thing that the timings for sports doesn't work over here. So. I wait till the next day, and then I just watch all the games I wanted to see. I watch the, the review. Uh, you know, I never understood is why somebody would record a sports event because it's over with. Well, you know, you want to you want to see it while it's happening, the excitement of it happening. Doesn't it's make fine it. As long as you don't know the outcome. Happened. What'd you say, well, uh, Charlie? Yeah. It's fine as long as nobody tells you what ha- what's happening. Because if I'm okay. out there on fire, I can't watch it live. But if I record it, yeah. I but can if watch you're watching live. recording, you can speed okay. it forward. There's always that temptation, you know. 
If you get an iPhone 16, you can plaster it to the front of your face, and it'll <laughs> and it'll time the speed of the baseball with its radar or whatever. So, I'm not kidding. I don't know. By the way, you know this this new iPhone will actually shoot in 3D. If you wow. have one of their goggles, it will allow you to shoot for the goggles in 3D. Wow. wow. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. And that cost you ten dollars or something? That cost me ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, ten dollars. Yeah, the goggles are two thousand. <laughs> no, the thirty five hundred. Are they? Oh my god. You know, I'm into wow. gadgets. I have no desire to buy that thing. You know? I think they I think it's a little item of apples that came out a little too early. Wasn't ready for prime time. Yeah, maybe so. So anyway. Uh, so is is uh, is Elon Musk still running his contest? I don't. Know. As far as I know, I don't know. As far as you know, know, he's still running the contest. Son of a bitch. There's questions out there if it's legal or not. Yeah. Well, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> you give me a million, a million dollars, I'll vote for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> million dollars wouldn't be enough for me. It wouldn't. No. Okay. You know, uh, of course, get, Charlie's just saying that he'd actually go in the booth, vote for Trump, and take the million dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'd take the million dollars and go vote for Harris anyway. Yeah, yeah. There you go. that's right. I think you, they'd have to see you do your mail in ballot. Yeah, you know, then they could then they could pay you. Well, you know, uh, if you get a million dollars, you can help buy an election, you know. So. <laughs> I mean, why doesn't he just, you know, he's got enough money. Why does he give everybody in America a million dollars? Yeah, really. <laughs> I mean, how many times does uh, does, uh, does a million go into 120 billion? 120,000 times. 120,000 times? Yeah. Uh, I guess yeah. it wouldn't take care of the whole United States. Only 120,000 times? No, that's he true. only needs to buy it off. No. The swing, the swing votes in the swing states. Yeah, that's what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't. I can't figure out what this contest was exactly. Can you guys? Have you figured it out? No. I mean, you're supposed to sign a piece of paper saying you believe in the Second Amendment and in the Constitution. How's that? He's. I don't think he's really doing anything. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what they say. But I don't know that he's doing anything illegal because he's not saying, no, if you promise matter. to vote for Trump, I'll give you a million dollars. You know, he's not saying yeah. that. The thing about Musk is he has so much money that he doesn't care whether it's legal or illegal because he can tie it up in courts for years and years. Yeah. He, the, the Blade Runner people told him, don't use our stuff as a backdrop. He said, I'm going to use it anyway. We can see Yeah, but what happens if the, just what he there's going to be a day when this guy goes broke or something's going to happen? He's not going to have the money. And then how's he going to defend himself? Right. And by then he'll be out of the picture. But I'm sure he's got, you know, 20, 30 million squirreled away. And oh, yeah. Throughout the world. 20, 30 million is nothing. It's pocket change to him. Yeah, I no, guess. I mean, I mean, and. You know, buy uh, 50 or 100 banks around the world. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, that's about it for tonight. That's about it for this week. Uh, every, I hope everybody had a good time tonight. Always a good time when Tom Yamaguchi sto stops by. Always good when Charlie's here. He's exceptionally brainy. Uh, thank you so much, Alan. Nice having you here as well, as well as Bree. And uh, Jeffrey Stein, always a pleasure. Thanks. Love you, my friend. Anyway, everybody, give yourself a uh, big uh, kind of wave goodbye, and I will give a wig, a wig, a big, <laughs> a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. There's our people, and uh, here we are, and we will uh, see you. Uh, what? On Monday, we're going to be doing the uh, little show that we do called the Pop-Up Show on uh, Hulu, on uh, Hulu, Facebook. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's no show after me tonight because Amy has taken the next uh, week and a half off. Uh, but we'll see you again uh, on Monday and then again on Wednesday. 
for once again the ramble right here see you then in the meantime as always if you see her you know what to do tell her i love her okay bye everybody